Hi, in this video, I'll be doing the H2 Mathematics 2020 Paper 1. We previously went through from question 1 to 6, so you can check those videos out. In this video, we'll start now with question 7. So we're not allowed to use a calculator, and we wouldn't need to. So it is given that fx is 2 minus sine 4x, and we're just supposed to integrate fx. So we just need to integrate 2 minus sine 4x. So because it's minus, you can just integrate one part and another. So just integrate 2, which is 2x. Integrate sine 4x, which is minus 1 quarter cosine 4x. With this minus sign, becomes a plus. Then you just plus c. Now we're supposed to find the exact value in terms of pi for x, fx, dx. So we now know f, fx, dx is this. So how do we do so is we can just integrate by parts or we can just multiply in and integrate normally. Um, for me, I just integrate by parts because the first part we already integrated this whole chunk. And when we differentiate this is 1. So keep integrate this whole chunk so you get this. Minus integrate, so you integrate, you dif you integrate the term already. You keep there. Then you times the differentiate of x, which is one. So there's nothing, and then this part you can integrate normally. So then you just get this, and you simplify. You should get pi squared over four plus pi over eight. Other ways of doing it will be just multiply it in, and then you integrate two x to be x squared, and then. But then you got this x sine 4x and you'll still need to use integrate by part at that case. So you might as well just use it directly at the start. Now for question 8, it says that the first term of our arithmetic series is 4. So a is 4 and the fifth term is 10. So a plus 4, d is 10. This means d is 3 over 2. And the 30th term will just be a plus 39d which equals to 95 over 2. And the next part, we're supposed to find the sum of the 21st term to the 50th term in this series. So, the way to do so, we can just take 50 minus 21 plus 1. So, this is the number of terms divided by 2. So, it's n over 2. Then, the first term is the 21th term and the last term is the 50th term. So, the 21th term is 4 plus 20 times 3 over 2. And the 50th term is 4 plus 49 times 3 over 2. What I'm using is the arithmetic series formula n over 2 times first term plus last term. So in the end, we get 1672.5. That should be the answer. And we'll move on. Now, the first term of the geometric series is 4, and the fifth term is 1.6384. So again, we just mean the first term is 4 and the next fifth term, which is a times r to the power 4, since it's geometric, is 1.6384. So r is taking this divided by 4, then you take the 1 over 4 root. So that equals to 0 0.8, since r has to be positive. And thus, the sum to infinity will be a over 1 minus r. So a is 4, divided by 1 minus 0 0.8. So the sum to infinity is 20. And given that the sum of the first n numbers is greater than 19.6, we're supposed to show that 0 0.8n is less than 0 0.02. So we just put sn to be greater than 19.6. We use the sn formula, which is a bracket 1 minus r to power n divided by 1 minus r. And we get this whole portion is 20. So you just divide by 20 over here. So that's 0 0.98. Then we just bring this over, switch over. So 0 0.8 for n must be less than 1 minus 0 0.98, which is 0 0.02, when we have shown. And we're supposed to find the smallest possible value of this n, and we can just learn both sides, bring the n down now. Then when we divide over, we need to switch the sign, because the long 0 0.8 is negative. So we need to take that in, into consideration. And then we get this, and hence we will find the smallest value n, which is 18.
Now for question 9, we're supposed to consider the gradients of two lines and explain why the tangent inverse of 2 minus the tangent inverse of minus half is equal to pi over 2. So this is one of the trickier questions and we're supposed to recognize that Okay, so what is pi over 2? Pi over 2 is like 90 degrees and gradient is like the slope of a tangent. So that means when we draw two tangent lines, we should like we and then we need to introduce the 90 degrees somewhere. So that means we need like perpendicular lines. That's how you're supposed to think about it. And I know it'll be hard to do it. So now because you have went through this question, you have practiced, you can do it in other questions. So we just let a gradient for one of the lines be so when you have gradient of a line, you just draw a line, and then you have xy plane, it is actually the angle it makes with the x, x positive x axis. So, tangent theta 1 is 2, and then you gradient of the other line is tangent theta 2, which is minus half. Well, we know that tangent theta 1 times tangent theta 2 equals to minus 1. So, these two lines are perpendicular to each other. Then, so because the lines are perpendicular, that means theta 1 minus theta 2 equals to pi over 2. That means, and theta 1 is just inverse tangent of 2, and theta 2 is inverse tangent of minus half. So that's why theta tangent inverse 2 minus tangent inverse minus half is pi over 2. So yes, this question is actually more fundamental and it requires a bit of thinking. And it, it should be quite hard to figure out why this is one of those distinguishing factors from a, like an ATA to an ITA. But that's why it's only one mark. They know that it won't hurt the student that much, but they hope to see that students recognize to use this method to solve it. Now the curve C1 and C2 have equations 1 over x squared plus 1 and k over 3x plus 4. So we're supposed to find the set of values of k such as c1 and c2 intersect. So you just write the equation for c1 and you write the equation for c2. Intersect means they equal to each other. Then you manipulate and you get this quadratic equation. And since we know they intersect, we already practiced this many times. We know that we have to use the discriminant method. We just let the discriminant be larger or equal to 0. Means b squared minus 4ac is larger or equal to 0. We're able to solve for k to be in a range. And so this... But we also know that k has to be larger than 0. So this minus half part is redundant. We can just start from 0 to 9 over 2. And we're done. So I hope you do this question and know how to do it. Because we have already seen this discriminant method happen in many other papers in previous years. Or even in now, the now in like the other years from the 2021-2022 papers. So you just need to know when to use the discriminant method and how to use it. It is now given that k equals to 2 and we're supposed to sketch c1 and c2. So there are two ways you can do so. You can just plug into GC and see how the curve looks like. Or if you roughly know the shape of the curve, you can just draw it out. And so what you should get is this following graph. Where C1 is this and C2 is this. With the asymptotes and everything labelled. So this shouldn't be too hard. You should have known how to draw your graphs. And we're supposed to now find the exact region bounded between C1 and C2. So C1 is here and then it's bounded by this part. So it's actually just this region. So it's just integrating from the first intersect to the next intersect. Minus half to 2. And then you see which one is the higher curve which is C1 which is 1 over x squared plus 1. And then you minus off below which is 2 over 3x plus 4. You get to see that this is tangent inverse. And then this integrate is some ln. So you get this. So just sub in and you get this following. And from earlier we know that tangent inverse half 2 minus tangent inverse minus half is pi over 2. So you get this and we are able to simplify these two lons. Combine them to get 2 over 3 ln 1 quarter. So... That's all for this video. I hope you have enjoyed these three questions answered. And in my next video, I'll wrap up this paper. 
So I'll see you again and please like, share and subscribe and comment any questions down below and I will answer them. Thanks, bye.